I've been involved with archaeology for a long time now, um, both as a volunteer and through my undergraduate degree and now as my access to archaeology um, project. So um, it's just a few things that I'm going to go through. So what I think is very important in um, young people, in fact anyone with an interest in anything, we have a responsibility to encourage that and develop the, their imagination. And there are a few different streams as to how you can do that. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that initially. Then I'm going to tell you about our approach and who we've worked with. Um, some of the feedback that we've got from some of our sessions, how we do um, what we do, so um, a little bit more into our methodology, and then um, just kind of what really focused us into developing this and seeing the need. So everyone in this room is aware that archaeology is a very diverse subject and it can be used as a tool for engagement in pretty much any subject. Um, so the way I see it is schools really provide that initial spark. So when children are learning about Romans, uh, Victorians um, and other periods in history, that provides um, the initial interest to find out a little bit more about that and also other areas which aren't covered in the national curriculum. So then media, museums, libraries um, and young archaeologist clubs and um, more national organisations develop this and kind of fuel the imagination through um, different pathways. So museums will have their own outreach programmes, the Young Archaeologist Clubs set their own programmes um, and it's very much a case of not necessarily what is easiest to deliver but what is the most popular for the most people. So what we try to do at Access to Archaeology is to develop that further and provide the individual with an avenue to develop and access different areas that they've got a little interest in slightly more, so it's more individual focused rather than mainstream. And this is also including people with disabilities and groups that might not necessarily feel confident in engaging in other larger group settings like museums and young archaeologist clubs. So our approach is very much looking at the individual and what they want out of uh, the workshops or whatever they're looking for us to deliver. Mainstream organisations we feel are very, can be very inclusive but also reinforce difference in, to some degree. Um, whilst museums are very good at providing access for people with wheelchairs um, and other disabilities, there can also be tasks which people can't access during those workshops. So if tasks are on the floor someone with reduced mobility might not be able to get on the floor so that would reinforce the difference that they are separate from those people in the group. So we aim to challenge this by catering for them first so all the activities that we run in that session whether it's purely for people with disabilities or if it's more of an inclusive um, group of mixed abilities we look at what tasks everyone can do so no one is being singled out as being different in any way and this generally um, leads on to giving people a lot more confidence um, and showing that they can do things and they're not different as they thought they might have been. So we've worked with um, people with vision impairments, that's mainly with adults with vision impairment um, 
We've worked with children with learning difficulties. We've um, also worked with some groups who have behavioural difficulties, um, so things like ADHD, attention deficit disorder. Um, we've also worked with people with autism. Um, and we've also done sessions for people with dementia in care homes. So generally what we find is we get very positive feedback because people are, are able to do things that they didn't think they were. So quite often what we found is when we talk to the people who are coming to our workshops, we find that their parents quite often take a lot of their responsibility away from them because in the parents' eyes they feel that they are protecting them and preventing them from realising that they do have some boundaries, whereas some of the um, people that I've spoken to actually feel that if they're able to do more um, and not restricted, then they would have a lot more confidence to go out and participate in other things um, in the community in general. Um, and they quite often suggest further workshops um, we did have a bit of a weird one, a very weird one, where they wanted to try and build model dinosaurs, but life-sized dinosaurs in terms of their height, <laughs> so they could actually go around riding them, which was very weird, but um, it's something that we like to encourage, all sorts of different um, suggestions and things, and so that they actually feel like they're participating as well. So it's not just a case of we're going along and saying, this is what we can do, this is all we can do. Whether you, if you like it, then that's great. But if you don't, then sorry, we can't help you. But what we want to do is make it so that it's very much participant-led. So I think we do actually have a very similar workshop along the lines of dinosaur making and riding coming up very soon but not, so we're going to take it from the fun element and then bring it back into um, slightly more factual, so trying to make learning a lot more fun for people. Um, and archaeological birthday parties is something that, they, that has come up quite a bit. Um, quite often it's mummies, um, because um, especially um, children that I found with attention problems, like the idea of wrapping people up in tissue paper for some reason. I, I don't know why that is, but um, so that's kind of some of the feedback that we've got. So the really why I wanted to tell you that was we're very much participant led. So these are some of our methods and how we do what we do. So what we do, we listen to the participant, if they've got a learning disability, and also if they're an able-bodied participant, to find out what they want out of the workshop, really. And when we listen, we actively listen, so we look at the body language. So we can assess whether someone puts a certain amount of space between you and themselves, so we can respect that and then move that and apply that for the whole of the workshop. Um, and also we feel that we have a responsibility um, because we are working with children and young people's development. So if we do anything that they don't like, they are going to remember that they weren't listened to, their opinions weren't taken on board, they suggested something that could have been done better and, and we ignored it. They will remember that longer than they will remember what a fantastic experience it was. So I think we have, because we're dealing with children and young people, we have a responsibility to ensure that we're not doing anything that's detrimental to their development. Okay, so a lot of what we do is through play. Um, going back to dinosaurs. I'm not entirely sure how that workshop's going to turn out, but perhaps next year if I come back, I'll let you know. Um, so a lot of it is through play. So 
very hands-on, very enthusiastic kind of um, activities. So they they might want to know more, but they don't necessarily want to be sat down and talked at for a long period of time. They want it to be very interactive, very hands-on. <coughs> so they are actually taking in more while they're moving around and doing activities that require um, a little bit of kind of less cognition in a way than just being um, talked to because you just switch off for that but when you're when you're um, playing then you don't necessarily take in everything that you're learning this is very good for younger children so a lot of our activities are self-led um, which encourages individual development so we do a lot of role play um, replica making what we try to do is we try to reinforce the idea that they can do even if they have the go in with the preconception that because of their disability they they, they can't do certain things we try and find a way so that they can do it which encourages a lot more um, confidence and they can take that away to other areas of their lives so what we focus on as I said earlier we focus on the disabilities I don't actually like the word disability I think it's um, a very negative word and I think we should be focusing on people's abilities because I think that everyone has challenges in life regardless of whether they have a disability or not um, but I just wanted to run through a few of these to give you an idea of how we've dealt with it when we've had individuals um, in our sessions with some of these disabilities. So with vision loss you have to be careful how you do certain things and you have to have a good understanding of what their vision loss and the only way that you can do that is through actually talking to them so if they've got central vision loss they're not going to be able to see to do a replica unless they turn their head and use their peripheral vision so you need to know and do the activities that are appropriate for them same as if you've got um, poor no peripheral vision but you've got central vision they're going to be very focused on this central area so if you're trying to talk to someone over here, they're not necessarily going to see you. Um, especially in group work and things, you need to be aware to be um, in their visual field. So with autism, we respect boundaries, um, talk to the individuals, uh, get an idea of whether eye contact is a problem because it can be with some children that we've dealt with. Um, also make sure there's a timeout area so if anything does get too much for them then they can remove themselves from the activities okay so our influences is very much the idea of the social model of disability so it's the world around people that are disabling them so things like inaccessible um, transport areas so we try to make sure that we either go to them or we're in a good location um, isolation um, because they're deemed different they're not necessarily feeling that they can integrate within the wider community so this is why we make sure all the activities are at a level that they that their abilities are at so that they're not seen as different at all Okay, so...